Hello everyone, this is Warhawk Beyond 2040 and welcome to another edition of the Flash Season 8 Review Series. And today I am going to be talking about Episode 9, Phantoms, which I have just finished watching. And this episode, for the most part, was actually really good. I really enjoyed this one a lot. And this one pretty much picks up where we left off at the end of Episode 8, where Barry and Team Flash realised that... They are dealing with a new meta-human serial killer, one that uses mysterious cold flames to burn their victims to death to the point where they are more or less just a burned-out corpse. So I thought that was an interesting way to not only end Episode 8, but also set up Episode 9, which, as I said, mostly was actually very enjoyable. And... The cool thing about this episode was there wasn't actually a villain in the traditional sense. I mean, yes, there was a villain, but not someone you go face to face with. This was more like, how should I put it, a situation you're trying to deal with. This episode more or less dealt with a phantom flame, so to speak. And I thought this was an interesting take for a villain, or at least for a situation in The Flash, because most of The Flash's run has always dealt with either the Freak of the Week, someone who gets powers through the Particle Accelerator, or is usually an evil speedster. It's one of the two. So this was actually a nice welcome change of pace. So I appreciate and respect that the show is trying to do different things because I kind of feel in some places the Flash kind of plays it safe and stays in their comfort zone. So it was actually nice to see them switch it up a bit and try something different. And for the most part, it actually worked. So this episode mostly focused on Chester because Chester, when he sees this mysterious flame it freaks him out so obviously he has some sort of connection to this flame and i thought this was very interesting because chester since he's appeared on the show he's pretty happy-go-lucky very upbeat you know always with his pop culture references he's basically like a nerdy cisco although there is only one cisco ramon he kind of has more or less picked up where Cisco has left off and taken the level of geekiness to the next step. And for him to um, experience sheer fright is interesting. And also, we finally got an idea of what's happening with Iris, because if you remember, a couple of episodes back, Nora and Bart kept messing around with the timeline. And eventually it got fixed. But as a result of that, Iris started having glowing green eyes and objects were starting to disappear. So we're more or less getting an answer to what exactly is going on. With her. Although we don't actually know what's happened yet. But clearly they're setting up for an explanation as to why Iris has been experiencing temporal sickness. But as I said, for the most part, this episode was actually pretty good. I thought this was very enjoyable to watch. So with that all said, let's get straight into it. Let's talk about episode nine, Phantoms. So at Barry and Iris's loft, Dion gives Iris a checkup for her temporal sickness and declares that she's all good. But she tells him about the recent issues she's been having with losing time and hazy memories. Before he leaves, however, Dion notices issues, specifically mutations he's never seen before. He goes to ask for assistance in figuring it out and tells Iris that he'll let her know when he finds out more. Meanwhile, at Star Labs, the rest of Team Flash is working the case of this mysterious fire meta, and Chester comes up with a device that will help them track the killer's unusual powers. But Chester seems very disturbed by things. At Iris's office, Sue stops by and Black Hole is gone and her parents are now in prison and she's handling their business. Sue is headed to Coast City to inspect some hotel she owns and tells them about the stories about a possible meta in Coast City, the Coast City Phantom. 
Allegra suggests that it would make a great story and Iris jumps on the idea of going with Sue to investigate. Chester's device gets a hit and the flash speeds off but it is too late, the victim is dead and the meta seemingly nowhere to be found. Chester and Barry talk about things like the crime scene and refer to what he saw as Blackfire and it's been nothing like he's ever seen before. Chester is still visibly disturbed, one of the black flames still exists so Chester uses a special device to contain the flame. In Coast City, Sue and Iris talk. Sue wants to know what's up with Iris but they get a hit on a mystery matter and track them to Jitters where they find a young woman, Tina. Iris approaches Tina and offers to help her the way she did the Flash years ago but Tina doesn't want help and fries Iris's phone before leaving. Back in Central City, Chester and Barry are having no luck trying to use the flame to narrow things down. Barry leaves to talk to Kramer, but Chester is still uncomfortable in the lab alone, and he soon discovers that the flame is no longer in containment. However, it only turns out to be a nightmare, and he has just fell asleep. Cecile realises that something is off with Chester. Sue and Iris work together to come up with a plan to find Tina, but Sue also presses Iris for what the real issue is. Iris confides in Sue about her time sickness. Iris is worried things are really bad. Sue tells her that she can't run from her fear forever and Iris then realises that Tina might be running from something too and gets an idea of where to find her. At Star Labs, Chester is still shaken up but Allegra sits and talks with him and while they chat, the flame escapes again and Allegra can see it this time too. They realise that this isn't a dream, this is actually real, and Allegra signals for Barry who shows up but can't put out the flames. They do disappear after a moment though, leaving everybody shaken. After they try to sort out what's happened, it's suggested they can come and go like a ghost. Barry suggests they are controlling the flames remotely. They lock down Star Labs and Barry goes looking for the killer. In Coast City, Tina phases through the wall of the building and is confronted by Iris and Sue. They know she's looking for her mother and Tina ran away from foster care. Iris offers to help her find her mum. At Star Labs, Ch Chester tells Allegra that the person in the fire was an actual ghost, his father's ghost. Allegra tries to convince Chuck that it can't be him, but the alarm goes off and the fires have begun again. The flames start closing in and it's up to Chester to figure out how to save everyone. Allegra feels Cecile in what's going on with Chester, but Cecile says she can feel the despair of thousands of people, not just him. The flames then turn into Chester's father and confronts him, telling him to come home. Cecile realises that it's not really his father and all the sadness is coming from whatever it really is. This thing feeds on grief. Chester starts to realise that his real father would have been happy for him and proud of the life he has built and Chester rebooks him and the flame manages to vanish. During the debrief, Joe reveals that each of the previous victims had been dealing with huge emotional losses. Whoever this new metahuman is, they feed on grief and sorrow to survive. Hmm, sounds a bit like Dark Side from Smallville, consuming people's darkness in their hearts. Cecile suggests that whatever it is, the flames themselves are very much alive. Later, Iris calls Barry and lets him know about Tina. Iris will be staying in Coast City for a little longer. After the call, Dion shows up. He knows what's wrong and it's not good news. And that's how we end episode nine. Like I said, overall, I thought this episode was mostly good. I like the idea that this thing, this flame, consumes on people's grief and sadness. It's different, it does sound very similar to what they did with Darkseid in Smallville Season 10. You know, Darkseid going around corrupting people and consuming them because they have darkness in their hearts. It's kind of similar to that, but for the most part, I enjoyed this episode a lot. Only takeaway I would say regarding this episode is not enough screen time of Barry. I mean, it is called The Flash, but we're not seeing enough of him. That's been my problem with The Flash in recent seasons, that there's not enough of him. I mean, I respect that you want to give all of the characters some screen time, but at the end of the day, it's still all about The Flash, and I want to see The Flash doing what he does best, and that's stopping the bad guys and him at his fastest. So I'd like to definitely see more of that 
in the near future. But other than that, this episode was mostly enjoyable. I thought this one was pretty good. And I'm curious to know where this story arc is going to go with Iris. So time will tell, really. So that's going to be it for me. I'm going to wrap this up now. What did you think of episode nine? Did you enjoy it? What did you think of this new meta-human thing that consumes people's emotions and grief? Do you think this is an interesting take? And also, what do you think the bad news is regarding Iris? What's making her become ill with this time sickness? And also, who is controlling the flames? Is it someone we've seen before or is it someone completely different? You know what to do, guys. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave your thoughts and comments down below. And I will see all of you next time for another edition of the Flash Season 8 review series, where I am going to be talking about episode 10, which I am very much looking forward to talking about, especially with the way this episode ended, as I'm really curious to see how all of this is going to play out. So should be a good one. So until next time, take care, everybody, and stay safe. And once again, as always, much appreciated. Thanks for listening.